possible by Cuisinart. Cuisinart. With the next generation of food processors, from bread dough to pizza to stir fry, we do the work to save you time. Cuisinart, the next generation. And by Bon Italia. Established by the Italian Ministry for Agriculture, Food and Forestry Policy, we promote and protect the Italian agro-food system all over the world. We represent authentic artisanal products from Italy. Buon Italia. And by Quella Vita, a family tradition that has spanned four generations. Only Italian olives are harvested and pressed to produce Quella Vita extra virgin olive oil. Quella Vita, a true Italian olive oil for the American table. And by Grana Padano, nearly 1,000 years of tradition, producing fine Italian cheese. Grana Padano. Buongiorno, benvenuti, dear in Van Dosta. That small region, actually the smallest region of Italy, nestled up in the left-hand corner of the Italian group, right underneath some of the tallest peaks in Europe. And you think are cold, and it is. But in the summertime, some of the greatest products really come forth there. And they have some great recipes, some good wine, and we'll cook some of those recipes today. Polenta with white beans and black kale. Polenta con cavo. Beef filet with wine sauce. Filetto alla carbonata. And then to end it, this smell, you know, there's a lot of milk up there. Chocolate biscotti pudding. Vino di giambuglia. Chocolate flavored dessert. So let's begin with the uh, carbonada sauce. You're dealing with a filet of beef. And the filet of beef doesn't roast it, it either grills or gets a quick searing or it's a quick method of cooking because you want it rare. To complement that meat that's quickly cooked, a nice complex sauce with red wine. So a bottle and a hot nice pan, we will get to sizzle right away. Some good wine, you know, because the product, the end product, we only as good as what you put in it. So Torre is a, a rival that grows in the Val d'Osta, makes a great wine. Also Pinot Noir, they have a great Pinot Noir. So either one of those or any good red wine that you have will do. Some water. Celery, carrots, and onions. Garlic, whole cloves, and if you like more, put more. A few rosemary branches, just like that. Porcini, those wonderful porcini. Dry slices of that nice porcini mushroom that you see grilled the whole cap. Well, when it's dried, it's just as wonderful. Actually, it delivers even more flavor for the punch. So this will let simmer full speed, then we'll cover it, and we'll let it cook for about an hour until it gets to about half the liquid. And while the sauce simmers and the flavors concentrate, let me take you to the beautiful vineyard in the mountains of Val d'Osta that inspired this sauce for our beef filet. <laughs> Mantosca's sparkling rivers and cascading waterfalls flow like diamonds encircling its majestic mountains. Italy's tallest peak, Monte Bianco, marks its border with France. Though the mountain makes a formidable barrier, French culture has infused Mantosca, especially in centuries old tradition of winemaking here. The tenacious vines cling to the steep mountainsides, nourished by the mineral-rich glacial soil. At this extreme elevation, there's a wide range between day and night temperatures, so the vines have a long growing season followed by a late autumn harvest. Perfect conditions for cultivating traditional French varietals. Licret is one of the outstanding vineyards in Valdosta. Dating back to the 17th. And then slowly whisk in the toilette. Eh? 
Well, if there's like porridge or a pudding, it uh, slowly cooks and uh, densens and uh, ultimately becomes a creamy pudding-like starch. It could be very dense or it could be runny. It depends on the way you like it. We'll begin to prepare the black kale. Now, black kale is a great vegetable. Tastes great, cook wonderfully, great with polenta. What you want out of them, you have this the stock, just pull the stalks right out and put some bacon in a hot pan so that it renders. A little bit of olive oil to get it going. And I like them nice and crisp, that's why a nice hot pan will do the trick right away. We have cleaned the black kale, just roughly cut it like that, you know, wash it, and some of, if you leave some of the washing water in there, it's perfectly fine, because you want it to help the kale. It's like a 4th of July reaction here. We'll add some salt here, not too much, because the bacon has salt, and cover it so that it cooks in its own water and juice and it will wilt down let's go back to the polenta and i'll mix it periodically by the time the kale has wilted and is cooked the polenta will be done and we'll make our dish is just about there. I think that the, the kale, yeah, is at the right moment. We have some white beans cooking, but you could even use canned beans for this. But certainly cooked like that and with a little bit of oil and then just you add sauce and all to the kale, just like that. Mm -hmm -hmm. We'll let this cook together. You could enjoy it soupy. I like it a little denser. With just a drizzle of oil for the beans. And now I'll address the polenta. Mm -hmm. It is the consistency that I like. Nice, and then once you put it, you see when it kind of piles up like that? I like it like that. Let's remove the bay leaves. Remember how many you put in and take them all out. And up in Madosta, Fontina cheese is the king. They put it just about into everything. It, here it is shredded and uh, we'll just fold it into the polenta. Actually, I'll close the fire just like that. This way it just blends into the polenta itself. You see, make it a little creamier. Mm -mm -mm. This is also at the point that I wanted. So let's make a plate of polenta. Okay, I think that's enough polenta. Let's put the polenta in bacon, some more of the kale, okay, a little bit more of the fontina cheese, just you give it a minute, by the time it reaches the table, it will melt 